Good evening, everybody. We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the regular meeting, uh, the January 23rd, 2020 uh, meeting of the Enlarged City of Middletown School District uh, Board meeting. Uh, we now called into order. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Pierre, would you please lead us? Could, could you please remain standing for uh, a moment of silence, please? Uh, 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 Mr. Perino. Thank you, President Williams. This moment of silence is for Roy Boyd, died tragically on Tuesday, senior at Middletown High School. Principal uh, Tracy Sorrentino, who's in the audience tonight. Stated he had participated in various athletic activities when he was a, 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 in his a younger um, days. Also wrestling. To quote, Roy was a enga very engaging young man. He was a very nice young man. Superintendent Del Morrill stated Roy will always be remembered as a kind young man who was well liked by the entire school community. I did not know Roy well, but I knew him as a member when he was a freshman of the NGROTC, and he was an extremely engaging person. So please remember Roy Boyd in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perino. Since you had that moment of silence. Since you had that moment of silence, thank you, um, Mr. Perino. Uh, since you had that moment of silence, before we go any further, I also like to take a moment on behalf of the board um, to extend our condolences to the family of Roy Boyd. Um, I know this family personally, and uh, certainly this is a tragedy for the entire city of Middletown. Uh, but we will continue hold hope, we'll stay strong, we'll stay together, we'll support one another, we'll uphold one another, because that's what we do. And so we send our prayers and our thoughts out to uh, his entire family, extended family, his immediate family, and, and uh, send prayers that they will have comfort and strength in this hour as well as to all of those that connected in the school district, um, that we will continue to stand strong and we will continue to uh, be comforted in this hour. Uh, there's still hope, and we maintain our hope. So thank you. Uh, we're going to moving on. Can I make this? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say that I think everyone sitting at this board table tonight has a very heavy heart, and I just want you to know that it's affected all of us. Thank you. Uh, let's move on, if you will. Uh, mission of the Enlarged City School District of Middletown. Uh, Mrs. Blumenau, if you would, please. The mission of the Enlarged City School District of Middletown. We strive to provide fiscally sound educational opportunities in a safe environment that continuously supports our diverse student population. We will enable all students to graduate, to reach their full potential, to become lifelong learners, and to be competitive, productive members of society. Thank you, Mrs. Blumenau. Roll call, Mrs. Clark. Here. Mr. Presenza. Here. Mr. Gomez. Here. Mr. Lassenier. Here. Mr. Perino. Here. Mr. Pierre. Here. Mr. Bison. Here. Pastor Williams. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion for the approval of our agenda, please. So moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passes. Motion for approval of our regular minutes um, from the January 9th, 2020 meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So passes. Approval of special meeting minutes from January 16th, 2020. 
So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So passes. Uh, moving on to our personnel, personnel action items. Uh, if there, actually, if there's no, if there is no objection, we will bring, we will put um, uh, personal memorandum 15A and personal memorandum 15B together, and then we will vote separately on the personal memorandum C. If there's no, if there's no, uh, anyone, anyone uh, opposing that. So may I have a motion for so, please? So moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So passes. Motion for approval of personal memorandum 15C, administrative. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All in favor? I only heard one aye. Aye. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a pastor. I'm looking for a response, or amen, or something. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, uh, opposed. Okay. Opposed. All right. So passes. Any uh, introduction of personnel tonight? Yes. Yes, Mrs. we do. Creedon. <laughs> yes, we do. We have Mr. Radonia here. I'm excited to welcome on a new member of his instructional staff, Mr. Radonia. Good evening, President Williams, Vice President Tobias, and Mr. Del Moro, Mrs. Creedon, Mr. Tuttle, and members of the Board of Education. Um, before the introduction, I just want to take one quick minute. Uh, on behalf of Monhagen Middle School, we would like to express our condolences also to the family of Roy Boyd. Um, he was a former Monhagen Middle School student who was very well liked in our school community. Um, he did wrestle at Monhagen Middle School and would be missed dearly. So just want his family to know we're all thinking of him. Um, on a more positive and happy note, um, I'd like to introduce you to our newest hire for mathematics at Monhagen Middle School. Um, it's Mr. Mark Swetlock. Uh, Mark is a graduate of Minnesink High School, uh, where he played golf. He still plays golf today. Um, he earned a bachelor's in math at SUNY Oneonta, um, also a master's in adolescent math education at Pace University. Uh, he is currently when I say currently, I mean like today and tomorrow, and then he's done at a, a, a high school leave at Minnesink High School. Um, he also student taught at NIAC. Um, he's currently on the, the weekends and at, at night a football official uh, and also a baseball umpire. Um, but starting Monday, he will be a full-time mathematics teacher at Monhagen Middle School, and we are very proud to introduce to you Mark Swetlock. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I um, just want to say thank you for the opportunity. I'm really excited to start my education career here at Middletown. And um, Mr. Adonia says I play golf. Um, I, I don't know if you want to call it play golf. I, I try to play golf, I guess. Um, but again, I just want to say thank you, and I'm very excited to uh, start working here on Monday. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. That's it? All right. Thank you. Um, Moving on, uh, recognition, announcements, and community reports. Uh, we want to. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Perino, and then he'll bring uh, he'll bring forth uh, whoever else needs to come. But for our Elks Club Student of the Month, uh, Mr. Perino, you can take you. it from here. Uh, thank you, President Williams. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Sorrentino. Your mic, your mic, John. Mike's not on. I think it is. He's on. You're good. I'm good, okay. Starting again, I'd like to invite uh, Mrs. Sorrentino, principal of the high school, uh, to come up to the podium, and she's going to ask uh, the two, uh, two deans to come up, along with our uh, Elk Student of the Month and representatives of the Elks. Come on up. Quite our fox. And uh, very impressed. Uh, I was talking to what our Fox before, I'm very impressed with him because he's going into the Navy and a, he wants a career in law enforcement. So, uh, Mr. Sorrentino, take it away. Thank you, Mr. Williams, <laughs> Mr. Del Moro, members of the board. Thank you so much for having us again for our 
23rd um, Elks Club Student of the Month. For those of us join, for those of you joining us for the first time, this program um, we work in partnership with the Elks Club. We're very fortunate um, to have a very supportive community who is helping us recognize our students who really go that extra mile to really display the character and the drive that defines us as middies. Um, we do bleed blue, and these students typify all of that. Um, I will turn things over to my colleagues here tonight. I have Mr. Omar Perez, and I know I'm overshadowing him because he's so short and I'm so tall. Though. Um, I have Mr. Perez, who happens to be our Dean of House Two, and Kader, the star of the show. Um, this evening, our award winner, and Anthony Williams, our Dean of Student Support. So at this time, I turn things over to Mr. Perez. Uh, thank you, board members, as well as uh, all invited guests and those who are here to support a uh, student that we're all very proud of. Um, I won't take up too much of our time. I'll speak for both Mr. Williams and I as he's very shy. Um, but um, I just want to acknowledge uh, Quader and who he is um, and what he embodies, which is truly a student of good character, a student who is successful academically, and a student who is very focused on his future. Um, at our school, he extends not only beyond the classroom uh, in where he shares success at, but also um, by participating in several uh, activities, one of which he's on the wrestling team, um, and two, one that we're very proud of, something that uh, Mr. Williams has helped us initiate in the school, is something that goes by the acronym of MBK. It's my brother's keeper, and he's one of our students who participated and is actually a captain and leader of that for the other students. Um, and he also has told us how he is a role model and takes it very seriously for a sibling at home. So that's something that we don't lose sight of. Uh, so we want to definitely acknowledge, recognize, and celebrate him as he is already planning on his future endeavors, one of which is joining the military and then hopefully down the line also becoming a police officer. So I'm very proud of him that he already knows at such a young age what he wants to do because many of us at that age did not. <laughs> so congratulations to him and that just embodies again uh, his level of focus and determination. So Quadir, I'll turn the floor to you. My name is Quadair Fox. Um, right now I'm in 12th grade. And in the future, well, right now I'm going to the Navy for four years for military police. After that, I plan on probably taking some time off. I want to help my little brother like do something with his life, so I'll probably try to see what I can help him with, see if I can bring him under the wing and get him in the Navy with me. And then after that, I plan on probably becoming a state trooper and just trying to live my life, man. It is it, 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 freshman year. I felt like I came into school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but speaking with Mr. Williams, I speak with him. I feel like a lot, and he like showed me like, yo, like you could do a lot with your life. Like he talks about how he didn't know what he wanted to do. He thought he was gonna be a basketball player, but it didn't turn out right. So he decided he was gonna work in school, which is never his plan. <laughs> okay. You're doing great, buddy. You're doing great. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're doing great. So, yeah, so, yeah, I just felt like him just talking to me and showing me that even though he wanted to do something and it didn't work out for him, he still kept going and found something for him. Now, I feel like I have a plan already, but you never know. It might not work out. You got to find something else. But I'm happy to receive this award, and I'm very thank you, thankful. So thank you guys very much, and um, definitely thank you. Yeah. We go up there and take a photo. Yeah.
presented the award this evening, and also the Elks are planning a dinner April 23rd for the students of the month, their advisors, board members, the families of the students of the month, and also student volunteers who have helped, the uh, Middletown student volunteers who have helped in various Elks activities over this past year. So April 23rd, tentative time is from 6 to 7 at the Elks Club. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And you also get your photo in the Elks Bulletin, and there are the two, uh, for the first two recipients of the award. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perino. Again, uh, congratulations for their well-deserved fine young man. We, uh, we appreciate you. Well, let's move on um, real quick. Um, uh, uh, board recognition announcements and community reports. We've got a little time tonight. Um, so we're going to move on. We're going to, uh, each of our board members takes a little time to talk about uh, events or announcements in the community that's going on. I'm going to start down at this end of the table tonight, uh, Mr. Lassanier, who we th and, and we're glad to see you back, feeling a little bit better, looking better, got color in your color in your face again. We're we're happy to see you. I, I'm definitely happy to be back, but I've been kind of uh, out of it for a couple weeks, so I really don't have much to contribute tonight. Uh, but I will definitely in two weeks. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Gomez. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, welcome to everybody to the Milltown School Board. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, last week to get a tour of the Agribusiness Child Development Program located at the same building with the Middletown Parks and Recreation. Uh, this program is interesting. It not only offers daycare services for children as early as two years old or even months old, but uh, from there they're able to go into Head Start uh, Pre-K and from pre-K into the Middletown School uh, Board Program, uh, Middletown, Middletown School District. And what particularly I found interesting is the service they offer to many of our immigrant families, particularly those that work in the black dirt region of here in Orange County. They provide them uh, child care services so that the parents could go work, provide for their families, at the same time help the children get an early start to their education. I thought I'd pick up some flyers. They send their regards, I believe, to the superintendent here to share with the members of the board. Uh, I also had the opportunity to join uh, uh, Bishop Williams and uh, Mr. Perino at the Martin Luther King celebration. It's one of my favorite events that's held in uh, Middletown, this time at the YMCA extension this past Sunday. And uh, uh, at the end of the, of the, of the activities, uh, Reverend Bishop Rollins asked the question, where do we go from here? And I've had that question in mind, especially after the tragic and senseless loss of our, one of our students. Uh, it brings up to my mind the question asked, asked once in ancient times, uh, in fact it was mentioned, am I my brother's keeper? And I think now more than ever, I think from uh, the schoolhouse to the, uh, the town hall, to the hearts of our homes, through our families. We need to emphasize, I believe, the importance of a culture that honors the sacredness, the sanctity of life, to teach our young people uh, that no matter what differences, what circumstances, we're gonna back each other up, respect each other, and promote the right of each and every one of us to pursue our gift, our God-given gift of life and happiness. And uh, my heart goes out to the family for their loss, and as a fellow parent, uh, who have children of similar ages, I pray that something like this doesn't happen uh, ever again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Moving down to the other end of the table, Mr. Pierre. Yes, sir. i uh, just like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Rodonia for the invitation to the uh, Monhagen School uh, Martin Luther King presentation, which was uh, very well put together. Uh, uh, everyone did a great job over there. I appreciate that. Also, uh, last Tuesday, I believe it was, I attended the uh, the encore presentation of the uh, Twin Towers Middle School uh, a winter concert, which was very, very well put together as well. I want to thank all the staff there uh, for working with the kids and uh, 
they did a very, very good job. Uh, also, I'd like to special shout out to my son, Zachary. He plays uh, viola. He was in that, uh, that concert. He did a very good job. Uh, also, I'd like to send uh, my condolences to the parents of, uh, of Roy Boyd. I, I have children also of similar ages, uh, one in uh, a junior at the high school right now and uh, one in middle school. I, I, I don't know what I'd do if I was to lose one of my kids. So I really want to uh, send out my condolences and uh, prayers to the family. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierre. Mrs. Blumenau. I actually haven't uh, been anywhere this past couple of weeks. I'm sorry, in the district, I'm very sorry for that. Um, but I would like to also share my condolences with the Boyd family and um, with, uh, with uh, all of his friends and um, his classmates. Um, it's, uh, it's a tragedy for our entire community and um, we're, we're just very sorry that this happened. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Blumenau. Mr. Pacenzo. Thank you. Um, and again, uh, my sincere condolences to the Boyd family and, and everyone involved. Um, not to repeat things that are already said, but you're not, you're not supposed to survive your children. Um, and my heart goes out to them. Um, OK, so on January 10th, we went to the uh, Shark Tank, Mr. Perino, uh, Superintendent Del Moro, Assistant Superintendent Creedon, and right here, the upperclassmen here, and it was really interesting. The, uh, the students came up with a product, and their task was to develop this product and had to be something useful, um, how they would market it, how, how, it, how they would build the product, distribute it, and what have you. Um, and some of these things were really ingenious. So, for example, let's see, we have the flamp, and it was a, uh, a lamp that was, you could use different plastic covers. So you had a lamp, you bought the lamp individually, and then you had different variations simply by using different covers. Um, the portable skateboard that folded up, so I, the way the students presented it, um, you were in a hurry to get someplace and you didn't have an Uber or whatever, you, you take out your portable which folds up, skateboard, and pew, off you go. Um, the multi-hanger, where you had one hanger that served many, many purposes. You could hang a, a dozen different things on this one hanger. Uh, no stress is the best. It was a, um, like, uh, what do you call those? The, uh, what are those things that spin? Yeah. Like what do they call it? Like a top, yeah. Fidget. fidget. Yeah, fidget, yeah. Um, but it was um, a takeoff on that, uh -huh. and I think it had a, a cell phone holder on it too. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the amazing sponge, the precipitator, uh, precipitation thing it was a hat that came out when you needed it to block the rain. So as they presented these uh, products and innovations, um, the panel uh, staff at the at the school asked them questions. Um, you know, how would you how would you market this? And they had on the overhead their product and a simple explanation. Um, so. These children had to think. They had to think in a business mode, um, and you can see like the lights bulb lighting up as the judges ask them questions and push them a little bit further to develop their concepts and, and how to go about it. So it was a lot of fun. It was very interesting, and I think it, well, the, the kids really, really enjoyed it. Um, and then reading the paper, uh, I know, Mr. Del Moro, you, you like a challenge. Um, the uh, uh, Comptroller of the state of New York, uh, Dinopoli, lowered the uh, tax levy mm -hmm. cap, ta tax cap, to 1.81. And if you're familiar with the tax levy cap, um, we have to keep our budget below that number. And this past, this budget for this year, we're at 1 percent, so we're well below the 2 percent that initially um, served us. And um, Mr. Dinopoli. Um, as a tax levy growth dips below 2%, school districts and municipal off officials need to be fiscally cautious and examine where they can limit spending to stay under the cap. Can you do that? Yes. You do it very well. You, every year, every year you do it very well. Yeah. Um, so the, the tax cap came into effect uh, in 2012, and when you stay below it, taxpayers get a rebate. They get a refund on their taxes, so it, it behooves us to keep the tax levy below that. And also, if you go above that percentage, 
you have to have a supermajority <laughs> vote. You have to have 60 people, uh, 60 percent approval in order for your budget to pass. So um, it was supposed to expire this year, but in their wisdom, it's going to go on in, uh, yep. until they decide yep. to stop it. So on, on a, a little more positive note, um, the uh, even though the uh, state of New York has got a $6 billion deficit coming up, uh, the numbers came through for the state aid, and ours increased by 4.4 percent to uh, almost uh, uh, almost uh, $4.8 million. But we'll see what happens with that. Um, more times than not, that number doesn't come through. So, But uh, it's a good place to start. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crescenzo. Moving on to uh, Mr. Perino. Oh, thank Mr. you. Middletown. Thank you, President Williams. Uh, Middletown. Just, ex <laughs> just echoing what everyone said, my personal condolences to the family and uh, uh, to friends and relatives of um, Roy Boyd. Uh, Mr. Casenzo and said something very worthwhile. You, you don't expect uh, your, your uh, children to pass uh, before you do. So it's a very tragic uh, event, not only for uh, the district, but for the city. Um, continuing on here, uh, I made one announcement about the Alps, uh, April 23rd. Uh, the other announcement is this uh, on February 2nd, there will be the Elks Pancake Breakfast, and it's coordinated by John Guattery. And John Egan uh, will be providing expert guidance. So, our students uh, will be helping some of our students. The NJROTC Corps, uh, led by Commander War and Master Sergeant Willard, uh, will be in attendance. The Monhagen National Junior Honor Society uh, will be there, Michelle Arbera, and the Maple Hill Elementary so Honor Society. A new advisor to that this year, Alexandra Hansen. And so you go to that and then you can return home and uh, get ready for the Super Bowl. So that's one thing. Uh, the concert season, I call it the Fall, late fall, winter concert season is finally over. Okay, the last one being uh, uh, last uh, Tuesday evening at uh, uh, Monhagen. It was the Carter concert at Monhagen. Uh, so I just want to say a couple words about that because the, the people deserve it. First, of, firstly, all the buildings are in great shape. They all look good. The custodial buildings and ground staff do a, a, a tremendous job. Um, shout out to the directors and their staff. Uh, takes a long time to put on these concerts. They just don't happen. Uh, the students who participated, uh, they prepare many, many hours for the concerts. And the parents who support them, they wait dinner and whatever. Uh, the Gertex under Victor uh, Iraqi. Uh, they become a, they've become more sophisticated every year. They hand out the programs. They help police up the auditorium. Uh, uh, they uh, hand out the programs on and on. Uh, generally, a very pleasant experience. Um, the technicians, uh, uh, I'll speak about them in a second. Ben Collins who and his assistant, uh, uh, Amber LaFries, who's in attendance tonight. The programs, prints of programs, all the programs are great. There's a nice layout on the programs. Uh, the technical crew, uh, Mark uh, Brownstone, who's here this evening. LaDonna Hudson, who's here. Uh, great job. Kevin Witt, our community liaison. He's at every one taking photos. So it was, a, it was a good season, and we'll get ready for the spring season. That'll come up in about a... Uh, a month and a half or so. Um, the there were the as uh, Mrs. Tobias said, I'm going to let her talk about the Martin Luther King program at uh, Monhagen. Oh, thank you. It, it was really excellent. Uh, Mr. Tucker uh, arranged the program uh, and uh, ably assisted by many many members of the faculty. Uh, but I'll let you talk about that, Rose, because uh, you were uh, uh, you were there. 
I want to follow up on what Kevin Gomez said about the Sunday program, Dr. Martin Luther King Sunday program. Uh, Ira Badansky and Bishop uh, Rollins uh, are the main, uh, this year were the main uh, organizers of this program. Uh, great presentations, the Middletown Interfaith Council, uh, are one of our uh, board members, President uh, Bishop Williams, and I did not know until this day that it was not Barzini, but Bishop Williams, who could carry on a tune, and he sang a medley of three songs. And he did a, a wonderful job. I knew you could play the piano, but you never said you could sing as well as you did. So congratulations on that. Uh, Mr. Gomez was, was also there, and it was a very nice a late afternoon. So I could go on, but that's all I have. Rose, take it away with the Monhagen. Thank you, Mr. Perino. Thank you, uh, Pastor Williams. Um, I asked Mr. Rodonia to stay because I um, uh, wanted to share some great happenings at Monhagen. On Wednesday, I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Uh, Rodonia. Uh, as John said, they had an outstanding Martin Luther King presentation uh, last Friday afternoon, well attended by the students. The students' behavior was outstanding. Um, and I think it, it, it's a real eye-opener when you start reflecting back um, to that era and what Dr. King had to uh, persevere and what he was able to accomplish. It's, it's sad in one way that some of his dreams, he wasn't able to personally see the realization of those. Uh, number two, um, the Monhagen Middle School uh, will be participating in the Odyssey of the Mind. The students are very busy and engaged in getting their skits prepared. That's going to be on Saturday, March 7th, down at uh, Bosey's Orange Ulster. They are doing The Little Mermaid for their um, presentation on March 27th and 28th. Uh, and what I'm going to ask Mr. Rodonia to talk about are two things. Um, he has the, his elementary orchestra and his elementary band have uh, all county nominations. And then he shared with me, and I have some to disperse, and he'll explain these little pillboxes, as I call them, but they're not little pillboxes, and who receives these at Monhagen. So would you join, Dominic, and share with us? Thank you, Mrs. Tobias. Um, we had a couple of students that were honored um, as all-county elementary band and orchestra um, candidates. These students were recognized. It says elementary, I know we're middle school, but sixth graders are still considered elementary, so these are only sixth graders. Um, being recognized were Jesus Guzman for tuba, uh, Ariana Kenton for trombone, and Angelica Thompson for trombone. Uh, and then for orchestra, we had Matthew McKay and M Emiliano Lima for viola, both for viola. So that was very nice that they were able to uh, receive that recognition. Um, what Mr. Bison has is, one of the things we do at Monhagen is we try to uh, positively incentivize uh, our students and academic and, and behavioral achievements. Um, we have some pretty cool items at the school, water bottles, um, card holders for your phones, and different things for our kids that are all related to Middletown. And um, one of the things that we just recently purchased that the kids are really liking, um, there are not pillboxes. Um, <laughs> they are a... a a round container with a MIDI M on it. Um, when you open it up, you know we are a very high technologically uh, um, district, uh, high tech district. Uh, inside are earbuds uh, for the kids. Um, they're not the most expensive earbuds in the world, but they are earbuds that we give to our kids so that as they're engaged in blended learning and flipped classrooms, um, they could put their earbuds in inside their classrooms when appropriate. Um, or you know some kids have other earbuds that they're putting in. But we just thought. What a cool case for them, you know, with the Middletown M. Thought it was a nice little treat for to recognize our kids. So thought it was kind of cool. So thank you, Mr. Bison. Would you just you. address we in in our conversation on Wednesday when I was there, uh, 
the successful lunch program at Monhagen? Oh, sure. Um, this year we have a, um, a new head in our cafeteria, um, Ms. Darcy Pinty. Um, Darcy has come from the high school. Sorry, Mr. Sorrentino. Um, she's come from the high school to the middle school, and she has really brought some innovative ideas. Um, a couple of things that she's done is she's really expanded the number of meals at not only breakfast, but at lunch and after school. Um, we have two vending machines where our, our students are able to get breakfast uh, either in the morning, all throughout first period, and half of second period um, outside of the breakfast hours, uh, and those vending machines are empty every day. Um, we're working right now with Deb Don Levy to um, get not only more machines, but larger machines. Um, and the interesting thing about the machines being empty is it has not dropped our numbers inside the cafeteria, which just means that more kids are eating. So it's not just the, the novelty of the machines, um, but more kids are eating breakfast, which we're really pleased about. Our lunch numbers are up as well, and our after-school numbers. Um, after school, we have a lot of programs, both academic, athletics, um, and just clubs. All of those kids are uh, welcomed to the cafeteria right after dismissal. Um, they are given a snack before they go to their either practice or club or whatever it may be, and those numbers are off the charts compared to last year. Uh, Mrs. Pinty has gone to um, great lengths to make sure all of our kids are, are fed all of the time. Um, and some of the things she's done is we have a hot dog bar once in a while in our uh, cafeteria, uh, a salad bar, all these different things that we haven't had before. At breakfast, she took the same muffins that we've always had and warmed them up, and the kids think it's a brand new item because they're warm muffins in the morning. They think it's the greatest thing ever. At lunch, she makes some new items such as teriyaki chicken, which the kids were like, don't want it. And so what she did was she found little cups and literally stood with a tray like she was at the mall and had the kids, while they were waiting to get their food, take a little cup to try the chicken, and they all went in and got it which they wouldn't have done because they just assumed they weren't going to like it. So she has really gone to great lengths to, to um, maximize the number of kids in our building that are eating. She's done a phenomenal job. Her and her staff have been absolutely outstanding, and we're just so pleased that you know, our kids are being fed in high numbers. Um, so, yeah. A special announcement coming up for April. We're waiting to see. We may. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very, very, much. very much. Thank you. I might add that uh, Mr. Sorrentino's school has been very successful with the vending machines, correct, Tracy? Oh my goodness, um, the vending machines have been a welcome, welcome, sorry. I always think of a cafeteria for my story. <laughs> um, good evening again. Our vending machines have been a godsend. Um, they are utilized constantly from the first floor to the third floor. They do provide our students with the opportunity to grab and go, if you will, and maximize their time in the building. So we are very pleased to have that. And our staff at MHS as well. The goal being to maximize on our um, ability to try new food items and engage the students in that process as well so their voice can be heard. You do an excellent job at it too, Tracy. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Thank you. Yeah, those vending machines are always empty every time I'm in the building. <laughs> Yes. That's why. That's why I don't go to just, the build. That's why I don't clarify. go to the high school hungry. <laughs> just to clarify, yes. these are healthy vending machines. Healthy vending machines. Healthy, healthy vending machines. Healthy. Yeah. They're all. These aren't candy vending machines. No. Right. And soda vending machines. Thank you. Excellent. I believe the parfaits are probably pretty popular. Parfait is still ranking number one. You guys tell me. Are they popular? The parfaits are they popular? Yeah. Okay. We've heard it from the voice of the students, so that 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 counts. That counts more than anything I would say. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, I'll be very brief. We've uh, I've attended concerts um, as we've come into the new year. Um, again, I am so excited about the uh, the progress of all of our scholars uh, in orchestra and in course concerts and band concerts, and they are doing a tremendous tremendous job. Uh, it just excites me to see progress from year to year as they go. Uh, also, uh, uh, some programs I was not able to make it make it to uh, with such a crazy schedule going on. Uh, 
so much going on in this year and in this season already. We are we are literally what 23 23 days in, and it feels like we've been mm -hmm. in six months already. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we're grateful uh, for the progress um, that we're making. I I, I want to speak for a moment about the Martin Luther King um, celebration that was sponsored. Uh, you heard Mr. Gomez speak to it. He was there. Um, Mr. Perino. Uh, were there, uh, was there as well. Uh, it was a celebration, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, that was sponsored by the YMCA and by the Interfaith Council of the City of Middletown. Many of our own students, as well as students for our sister uh, school districts, uh, performed uh, dance, uh, uh, songs, uh, uh, poetry, uh, rap, uh, have you, so many different things, and it was such an awesome awesome uh, experience I you know I hold a note I don't think I, I don't think I'm a singer I hold a note but um, uh, but I was glad to be a part of it I was not one of the plan uh, one of the uh, main uh, planners this year because of because of my schedule but always there to support but I, I, I need to make sure that I say this because dr. Martin Luther King's celebration is is also the beginning of our entry as we go into February of our Black History Month and uh, African American History Month. And uh, there will be so many different events that will be going on in many of our buildings. Uh, uh, but I, I do want, I, I do, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to, um, or yes I do. I, I was gonna say I don't, I don't mean to step on toes and, uh, but sometimes, sometimes I think that it's important for us to step on, on toes every once in a while to wake ourselves up. Um, Dr. King, we celebrate his dream, we celebrate the life that he lived, we celebrate that he was a prophet that was called to this time. And I say that not just because I'm a pastor, because I say that because the words that he brought were words that uh, would bring a nation together, uh, words that would, would empower and encourage a disenfranchised people um, that suffered, uh, uh, suffered and, and we have seen great strides, we have seen great improvement We've come a long way. The question was asked, where do we go from here? Uh, I, would say, I would say this, I would say this, is that while many parts of the dream have been, have been seen, there is still a long way for us to go. I think it would be, I think it would be disingenuous of us to, disingenuous of us to, to say that we accomplished everything that the dream uh, holds, but we keep striving. And that's the most important part, that we keep striving. It's easy to celebrate the life of a man who's no longer here, who said many things that not only makes us feel good now, but back in those days made us feel very uncomfortable. And I think that important for us to understand, it's important for us to understand that if we're going to progress and see the fruition and the manifestation of this dream is that we continue to have the hard conversations but we've got to trust one another enough to be able to have hard conversations and trust one another to believe that despite where we come from, despite our backgrounds, despite our color, our creed, our religion, whatever it is where we come from, that we trust one another enough to have hard conversations. That is not personal, but it's more or less, it's more or less our attempt and our, 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 uh, our fight to achieve a dream. Um, and I think that the dream is worth achieving. I think the dream is worth fighting for. I think the dream is worth striving for. So I encourage each of you tonight. This is my. This is my. This is my. Uh, this is my soapbox. Dr. E used to have his soapbox. This is my soapbox. I encourage each of you get to know one another. Our relationships is what will help us to get to know one another. Unless you know what I've been through, unless I know what you've been through, you really don't know me. Unless we get to really sit down and have some conversations about the struggles that we've had and the triumphs that we have, we really don't know one another. And that's the only way that we will be able to achieve the dream that Dr. Martin Luther King fought for, lived for, and died for. So I'm done. That was my soapbox for the night. That was your sermon for tonight. It's good. Thank you, sir. It's good. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're going to move on. We're going to move, we're going to move on. So uh, we are at our first opportunity to address the board. Uh, you have four minutes. Uh, 
anybody from the public, anybody that addressed the board for a minute, you come, you can come to the podium, sign your name in, so that our district super, our district uh, clerk will have your name. We do not interact. We will we will not we will not have a, a, a major discussion, but you have an opportunity to address the board. And if it's something that needs to be addressed later, certainly our administration will address it. Lou is the timekeeper. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Pierre is our timekeeper. Our fine city councilman is here. Uh, welcome, sir. Ready, set, go. Yes, go. sir. Ready, set, go. Um, <clears throat> Jerry Kleiner, um, second ward alderman. Uh, good evening, uh, Superintendent Del Moro, President Williams, and members of the board. Uh, happy to be here and have an opportunity to say hi. Um, my primary reason for being here is <clears throat> to announce that our MIDI Pride cleanup date this year is going to be April 18th, Saturday, April 18th. Um, it is the same day as the Little League Parade, and we went around and around with dates, but it's important to we get out there, get the word out there and say, save the date so that it's a great community event. It's where everyone gets together, shows their Middletown pride, shows their MIDI Pride, um, the uh, football team's been terrific with so many of the sports teams, so many of the groups, honor society, so many of the students have been great at turning out, but so is the rest of the community. So we think it's an important event to help clean up the town, and uh, I want to make sure everyone has that date in mind. Um, also, uh, I was at the uh, Martin Luther King event last Sunday and uh, uh, it was very well done I wasn't able to stay for the whole thing but um, and and I hope it gets a little better advertised next year so more people can know about it but I, I do thank uh, Ira Bisdansky and the YMCA and the Interfaith Council and people for putting it on um, <coughs> Dr. King talked about a lot of things you know, and he got a lot of grief for a lot of things he talked about. You know, but Dr. King, what's what's a? He talked about civil rights, but he talked about the evils of militarism and materialism and poverty. And they said, Dr. King, what's a colored man doing talking about war? And he wouldn't let them put him in that place. And he spoke about war and he spoke about human rights. Yes. And. There's an event every year that's sponsored by the Orange County Human Rights Commission, and it's called an Artist Response to Human Rights. And it's all the all the high schools. Um, it's a certain grade. Maybe it's it's all grade 12 or grade 11, but it's the Orange County high schools, and it's all the students get a chance to take the 1948. UN Declaration of Human Rights, a document that we see shredded every day in so many ways. And they are very insightful, but disappointingly this year and last year, again, Middletown did not participate. And I asked them why not, and they say the school just doesn't respond to our request to have the students participate. I hope it's something you will look at next year because I'm sure they're going to plan to do it again and I think it becomes more and more important as we understand how fragile the concept of human rights is. We see it in this country, we see it around the world. And um, where do we go from here? I don't know whether it, <coughs> it got presented but I, I got there a little late so I tried to uh, and uh, uh, Jim Rollins uh, my program with on the bottom I put census and I put underline underline and that's something that everyone every kid in school every person in this community can say did I get counted because you do count but you won't count if you don't partake in the census so we need to get the word out this is a census year <coughs> everything our representation all our aid everything Middletown's about depends on those census numbers who we are and who we and who we show who we are. So, no one be afraid to fill out the census. Everyone make sure did I get counted? Um, and finally, uh, we did have some people from Newburgh come to our council meeting on Tuesday, and they spoke. Uh, 
They spoke about what happened at the school. They spoke about after the basketball game and all the events that went on. Um, Chief Wants, who did an excellent presentation. And they came and they spoke about finding solutions. So uh, I know we've had meetings and we had meetings uh, with the police, the mayor, superintendent, Middletown, Newburgh getting together. And that's what we need to find is solutions, uh, ways we can prevent it from happening rather than pointing fingers at anyone. And we certainly commend the Middletown Police Department. They have been such terrific community partners on our point in time counts with our homeless population, with our schools, with everything we do. The Middletown Police Department ha has been tremendous. So I want to commend them and really, when we saw the video, commend the restraint they showed. They were doing their job and I think they did it really well. And I just hope we can all move on and look for positives from here and ways to find solutions and not to point fingers. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I add one thing uh, about the census? That determines the number of Congress mm. people that represent our state. New York State is losing population dramatically. Yeah. And if it gets below a certain number, we're going to lose a congressperson. So it's important to be counted. Um, it could make a difference. Thank yes, you. Yes. Anybody else? First opportunity just to board you. Yes, sir. Hello. I'm Eugene Naboa. I'm one of the uh, coaches for Middletown Wrestling. Um, I'm up here regarding uh, Jason Lichtenstein. Um, so, uh, Superintendent Del Moro, thank you for reading my emails. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'm sure you had uh, many others to read. I want to thank you for taking your time to read them. Um, Ms. Sorrentino mentioned something earlier about uh, someone bleeding blue. I don't think I've ever met anyone in my life. And I grew up here in Middletown. I went to school in Middletown. I graduated in Middletown. I'm a coach here at Middletown. Um, I don't think I've ever met anyone that bleeds blue more than Jason Lichtenstein. Um, we do understand there's policies and procedures. Um, we, the only thing I'm asking, I'm not going to take up too much time. I just want to ask that we get to whatever investigation or whatever policy needs to be completed uh, just so he can get back to work and back with his boys as they uh, are about to head into the championship part of their season. And most of them have been, my son, Justin Morales, has been with him since the eighth grade to be in this section tournament without Jason Lichtenstein would just be a terrible situation, not just for the wrestling community, for the Middletown community as well. Um, so again, I just want to thank you for your time, let you know how we feel about Jason Lichtenstein and how we just really need him back uh, so these boys can get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that'd like to address the board? Go. I have to man the camera, but I'll sign that thing um, after. You're not, you I will don't be have heard. A microphone. I just have questions for you guys. Not really. Just really. Well, we don't, we're not, we're not, not going to dialogue. We won't dialogue. This, during this section, we don't dialogue. But if we have questions, we can talk afterwards. Okay. Yeah, we're, this, this, part, this part is just the opportunity we'll to address everybody. the board, but we don't dialogue back and forth. Okay. Thank you, hon. No, appreciate it. This is my fourth year, and I'm really starting to come into who I am as a wrestler. But before that, Lichtenstein is someone who helped me grow more than just as an athlete, but as a man, and like told me the values of hard work. And coming into this portion of our season, you know, like what we started to build as freshmen, this was a program that was like really off bad, and now we're ranked in the state. We're doing some great things, and it's just like really hard to like keep practice where it's supposed to be at and like keep going towards the things that we want to achieve without him. And it's just like really putting us in a tough situation and just like, I don't know, I feel like it's, it's like a situation that he shouldn't have to be in because he just spent so much time like away from his family and put so much time and effort into our development and our like beyond wrestling, just helping us get to where we have to be. You know, he takes time to help me apply to colleges and look for the right colleges and do the right things in the future and be a better student. And I had a lot of success in the classroom and that was just like him pushing me and 
telling me to do the right things and showing me how to do it. And really, it would help to have him back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody of the board. And yeah, good evening. Um, I'm here to talk about the same thing, really. Just, you know, this man has changed my life in so many ways. Um, growing up in my life with two brothers, and I didn't have a father my whole life. And, you know, this man, uh, my sophomore year of high school, took me under his wing, showed me ways um, of wrestling, and was like, just try it out. So I was like, I try it out. And he's more than just a coach to me. He's had these father, these father figures to me and most of my teammates showing me how to do things, teaching me things that I never learned because I didn't have a father the, the most of the time of my life. And it just hurts me in many ways, just, you know, not being able to, um, just um, trying to do what I was told by him, but without him. It just hasn't been the same in our room, in the classroom, and just mentally, being mentally beat without having him around is just it's not the same. So I just hope for the best and have this situation sped up so we can have our coach back. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, my name is Josh Sam. I'm a senior at Middletown High School and a member of the um, Middletown Wrestling Program. And I just wanted to speak on the same matter as them with Jason Lichstein, um, my coach. Um, you know, it really hurts just not having him in the room with us. Um, as an answer, like, this is like my final shot, like, at the sectional tournament, you know, like, I'm hoping to um, exit the program, like, making my mark, and like, not having him in the program with us, like, it really hurts, like, it doesn't feel like right, like, <clears throat> no, like, no information has been released, like, we have no idea what's going on, like, what the time frame we're gonna be, like, coming back with us, like, what's gonna happen and like some, some information and like some like action would like deeply be appreciated. Um, at this point, like really, we just want it back. That's basically what to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Joseph Velasquez. Um, I'm a senior. So this is my last year wrestling. And it's not gonna be my best year because I'm in my corner. I'm trying to win the Texans. I need him in my corner. This guy has made, He's impacted my life a lot. I'm grateful for everything he has done for us, and I need him in, in my corner. I don't got much to say. We just need him back, you know? Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Justin Morales, as my dad said. <clears throat> I emailed Delamora about you know, the situation that's been going on. Um, I've been with the scene for a long time. And being, like, the longest member on his team so far is um, I've been through a lot with him, especially to get through, you know, sectionals and stuff. He was the only person that was with me. Um, when I was down on myself and I couldn't feel like I could do it. And he helped me to not give up on myself and got me to where I needed to go and to win a section title. And um, after la last year being like a fluke and not returning back to the school with another section title under my name, it kind of like really put me down, but he put me in the right position again for this year to get my motivation back and to possibly win a state title. But being that he's gone is kind of putting a big toll on me and everybody else. And we just wish to speed up the process a little bit because it really, like, it's hard for us to not keep the same intensity that we used to have when he was there now that he's not. And, yeah. Hi, my name is Jacoy Harvey. Um, even though I've been wrestling for only two years, Lichasine told, told me so much. 
Um, after having that season that we had in football, I feel that um, that something like this can't happen to for wrestling too. Um, I just feel that I need him back in the room as as much as possible, as soon as possible, and that's what I have to say. You can sign. You can sign. You can sign your name for everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your courage. It's not easy to stand. It's not easy to stand up in front in front of everybody and to, and to speak. So um, let me let me applaud you for that. Let me applaud you for that um, for speaking and speaking well. And speaking well, um, Mr. Demaro. Gentlemen, uh, I know that this is a difficult situation. And um, believe me, we're trying to expedite the process as soon as we can come to a reasonable conclusion. Uh, but I'd like to mention that I'm very, very proud of each of you. Uh, it takes a great deal of courage to come up and did what you did. Uh, so I um, applaud you for that effort. Uh, it, it's a tribute to your um, attribute as a young man coming in and speaking in your mind. That's what America is all about. And I want to thank you for doing that. Good luck in the season. Anybody else like to address the board? Anybody else uh, like to address the board? There'll be a second opportunity in just a few minutes. Any letters? No? Okay. Any letters? No letters. No letters tonight. Um, let's move. Let's move on real quick, and we'll have a second opportunity to address the board in uh, in, a, in uh, a few minutes. Um, action items. Action items. Um, approval of financial memorandum uh, number 15. May I have a motion, please? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So passes. Uh, approval of special services memorandum number 14. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So passes. Approval of change orders, Carter uh, safety improvements. May I have a motion, please? So move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Amen. A discussion. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me go back. Discussion. Mr. Scott, would you like to take a moment to explain, explain uh, the change orders? I'm sorry. Good evening. Um, before you this evening, there's uh, actually two action items for change orders, and um, I'll go over the um, William Carter first, and then I'll explain the second one if you can yeah, do them together. Okay. Um, we had a uh, change order meeting with the members of the committee at 4:45 today. They reviewed these a uh, uh, couple of change orders for William Carter. Uh, the first one is um, uh, one of the the major electrical rooms in the front of the building did not have a fireproof ceiling in it from previous construction, so that had to be added based on the fire inspector's uh, final inspection, um, <clears throat> along with the fireproofing around that. Um, the second, and that was uh, $3,200. The second change order was to resupport gas lines up on the roof of the building. We had to extend gas lines, but the original gas line was not properly supported. Um, for snow sliding, as we saw out at um, Monhegan Middle School this winter. So we uh, did additional supports up there, which included structural work and roofing work. That was $5,118.75. Then the second action item is, um, and I grouped these just because they're in different authorizations, uh, so that we had the, the documentation correct. First one is uh, Middletown High School door replacement project, which is just about concluded. Uh, we had to have the door frames, which are fire rated, recertified because we use a different type of hinge. Uh, so we had to have someone come in from um, Underwriters Laboratory and recertify those for fire safety. And that was a cost of $2,446. And then the final change order of the evening is for Maple Hill Elementary School. If you remember, during the roofing project this summer, we put all new ceiling tiles in both schools as we 
uh, after we had replaced the roofs to ensure that we didn't have any uh, tiles that had been, you know, damaged previously and, and leaks. And we had a couple, a classroom uh, 202, which was missed on the architect's plans, but the contractor installed them at that time. So we had new ceiling tiles to start school, but this is just to catch up and pay him for that work. And that's uh, $2,604.12. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so we've had the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So passes. Uh, he's also explained this 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 next uh, action item. So I need a, a motion for approval of change order uh, CCD MHS and MH Monhagen. So moved. Second. So moved. Yes. Second. Second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passes. Um, approval of resolution, superintendent employee medical examination authorization. Let me make clarification. This is not, has nothing to do with our superintendent uh, having a medical authorization or anything. This is so that he may approve medical authorizations. He is healthy and he is fine and he is well and he eats well and so we have nothing to worry about. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I make that clarification so nobody gets nervous and nothing ends out on social media and we have a firestorm. So, so moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passes. Thank you. Uh, approval. Uh, F, approval of stipulation of agreement. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passes. We move on to our second opportunity to, the, to address the board. If anybody would like to address the board, welcome. Same rules apply as the first time. You are, you are certainly welcome. Thank you. Um, hi, Alicia Weissman, uh, League of Women Voters. Um, I understand the board is going to be uh, considering a uh, policy to promote um, voter registration among students and pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds, which um, I'd like to thank the board very much for doing that. Um, at the League of Women Voters, we believe that our democracy is stronger when more people participate. And I think if you get them young, they'll, they're more likely to uh, vote as they get older. Um, being that it may have been a while since some of you had to fill out a form, I brought some in case you wanted to look at it while you're discussing the policy. Um, so, but thank you for considering it. Thank you. Thank you um, we'll give them to Mrs. Blumenau. Is that is, is right? Yeah, she's a policy policy. Okay, and then she she can pass it on to the, she can pass it on to the, the pass it on to the administration. There's one for everybody. Oh, she's got one for everybody. If I could say, um, Ms. Wiseman. I've been in contact with Ms. Wiseman, and she's been very helpful um, helping us develop this policy and giving us the information that we needed to move forward. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else? I'd like to address the board at this time. Once, going twice, third time, all right. Thank you. Moving on, moving on, um, any uh, committee reports? Any committee report, um, Mr. Policy. policy uh, let me let me let me have the policy committee first, Mrs. Blumenau. Policy committee. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much to the League of Women Voters. Um, very exciting to have that here in um, right here in our community. And um, this is a new. This is the revised policy up for. Um, Approval, the policy committee reviewed it, uh, and um, the student voter registration and pre-registration policy is the district recognizes the importance of voting and civic engagement. As such, the district seeks to encourage student voter registration and pre-registration. A person who is at least 16 years of age and who is otherwise qualified to register to vote may pre-register to vote and will then be automatically registered to vote upon reaching the age of eligibility as provided by law. The district promotes student voter registration and pre-registration through the following means. 
collaborating with county boards of election to conduct voter registration and pre-registration in the district's high schools, and encouraging voter registration and pre-registration at various student events throughout the year. The completion and submission of voter registration or pre-registration forms will not, be a, will not be a course requirement or graded assignment for district students. And that is our policy that we are approving today. Um, may I have a motion? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? No, all I just wanted to say is that uh, in our schools or in our social studies curriculum, we emphasize uh, throughout the high school education the importance of our students understanding our basic freedoms and documents. In 11th grade, when they take American history, they learn about the Constitution, the separation of powers, and are engaged, of course, in discussions of current events and the different elections, be they national, state, or municipal. And then in high school, they have their the required, I mean, the senior year, the required participation in government course. So I think this will add and continue to encourage their interest. Uh, I pre-registered to vote uh, because I couldn't wait to turn 18. And once I turned 18, I got my card. And basically, this uh, uh, resolution doesn't decrease the age of voting, but just encourage our students that when they reach the age of 18, they're ready, willing to go to the polls and vote as informed citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? All right. Thank you. I know that our uh, high school works diligently to, um, in, in our social studies uh, curriculum to um, educate our students and to uh, the value of their right to vote. And we will be continuing to do that in various other ways. Did you want to speak about that at all, Mr. Delmar, before we? Well, certainly. Just to add uh, to what um, Board Member Mr. Gomez said, that it starts in 11th grade. We don't even start earlier than that. Uh, in the seventh grade curriculum, uh, they do American history from the age of exploration up until including uh, just about the Civil War. In eighth grade, they start with Reconstruction all the way to the present time. So they are introduced uh, again at a more sophisticated level in seventh grade, which then bridges them to the high school experience. Um, so that um, by the time they get into that 12th grade course that you mentioned, participation of government, they're well versed in not only in the structure of the government, but the functionality of the government. And then, of course, how does our government work? Well, elected officials. So what we're going to do to uh, fulfill the requirement of the board uh, policy on early uh, pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds is to we're in the process of, and we've had some great ideas to commence um, this initiative, which we uh, support wholeheartedly. And we're going to do it by uh, like a citizenship day where the entire school at the high school will participate in a numerous and various activities uh, about citizenship, the uh, importance of citizenship, and how it affects their daily lives, getting licenses, and all of those different things that we do as part of democracy. Uh, what is the difference between a caucus uh, and you know an election group? You know, and all of those different types of activities and important pieces to the election process, especially go into a national election um, come November. So uh, we will also uh, avail ourselves to have the students sign up in the pre-registration as they go to and from lunch. As we heard Mr. Redonia say that, and Mrs. Sorrentino both secondary principals, that that's a very uh, busy thoroughfare, the cafeteria, uh, throughout the better part of the day. Uh, some schools have four <coughs> periods, some have five periods for lunch, uh, but everyone stops by the cafeteria some portion of the day, and therefore we'll have, uh, we'll work with the League of Women Voters as well as the Orange County Board of Elections uh, to uh, enhance that availability and notification that is so imperative, important to do that. We will also have other activities in the classrooms uh, at different grade levels, not just at the ones we're talking about at 7th and 11th and 12th grade, but all of the classrooms, certainly around all the elections, whether it's for primaries, what's the primary, what's caucuses, and so on and so forth. So we're looking forward to all of those activities and some uh, that will be forthcoming. Thank you. All right, all in favor? 
Any opposed? Motion passes. This is a new policy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Gomez, um, fair funding. Fair funding. Uh, this week in the news, uh, we had a lot of issues that relate to fair funding, particularly the governor's uh, proposed $826 million increase in school aid. And while uh, that, we, that increase will be seen in areas such as a $15 million increase or expanded pre-kindergarten program for three and four-year-olds, $10 million for after-school programs, and $6 million for early college high school programs, there are uh, areas of concern uh, the, where the impact might not be as positive. For example, there's going to be an elimination of, there's a proposed, which hasn't been approved, a proposed elimination of state fiscal share of certain costs related to the Committee on Special Education, CSE placements. So the state is eliminating its fair share. The question is, who's going to pick up that fair share? And then we have uh, uh, the issue uh, that the governor is proposing lumping 10 expense-driven aid categories into the foundation aid. And this is of concern because foundation aid uh, historically was designed to help uh, children with special needs or special needs uh, po uh, members of the population of a school district. Uh, to, as was expressed by the uh, New York State Council of School Superintendents Director or Executive Director Charles Dedrick, if I may quote, district officials have some ability to forecast future A levels for these formulas but they cannot uh, predict what foundation aid will be from one year to the next. Proposals to cast transportation aid and revise building aid reimbursements raise similar concerns and threaten to impose new costs for districts to absorb within the property tax cap. So although there is a proposed increase in foundation aid by the governor or to shift funding to higher need school districts, and in many areas, our district falls in that as one that may qualify for more funds. We have a lot of other ex expenses that were handled by the state coming in now as new unfunded mandates. So what we gain, we may lose. I still am concerned that the state of New York does not get it. And that's not to mention other proposals in the state budget, uh, either from the governor or for the state Senate majority, which include a new tax on internet purchases, a new tax on prescription drugs and medication, a new commuter tax, a new tax on driving, a new tax on real estate transaction, a new grocery bag tax, and another, uh, and the exodus down I-84 to the south continues. Smaller tax base. I do hope that the, the uh, legislature will consider the importance of mandate reform if, they would, if they're serious about increasing aid and, and, and addressing the inequalities in state education, and of course promoting fiscal policies that encourage economic growth, not ones that drive taxpayers down south. And if you're interested in becoming part of the fair funding discussion, please join the fair funding committee. You may contact our wonderful and outstanding district clerk who will provide more information. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Um, I want to applaud you on your diligence to that fair funding committee. It's, a, it's an extremely important um, committee. And to um, be honest, it takes somebody very special to be able to handle that. Mm -hmm. All of us are not, all of us are, are in touch, but we're not all equipped to, um, to really deal with that fair funding committee. So thank you. Thank you for your work in that, in that area. Um, any other committee reports? Yes, the audit committee meets next Wednesday, uh, January 29th at 4.30 at the board office. 29th at 4.30? Yes. All right. Um, if there's nothing new and compelling, we'll, we'll bypass roundtable. Actually, um, Superintendent would like to add, yeah, Just to add to, to the reports, um, you know, we had uh, Mr. Kleiner come and talk about um, one of the art awards. And as you all know, uh, each year we do the Scholastic Art Awards. And each year, that is a growing, growing participation by our students. Uh, this year, I'm very pleased to announce we have 14 gold key award wow. winners, 30 wow. silver keys, one American vision 
um, nomination. So um, at New Pulse on February the 7th will be the first round, the regional round of uh, competition uh, recognition. And uh, there they would go on to a national competition if they continue winning. So uh, each year we bring in Ms. Ferreira uh, and the co-sponsors uh, with her, one of the teachers that come in and we'll see uh, some of the exhibits. Uh, and of course, honor all of these will be invited to a board meeting uh, shortly thereafter, February 7th. Uh, also, I'd like to announce this year, we have, for the first time, as you uh, voted to create a bowling team for both boys and girls, yeah. right? Yes. Well, I'm very proud and pleased to announce the bowling team is qualifying for the sectional, and we've got to congratulate them. So they're right. our first shot out yeah. into sectionals, wow. and uh, we'll invite them all to as they come in later uh, in our school school term. So um, congratulations to the bowling team and all of the Scholastic Art Award winners. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Nothing new and compelling. Our next, our next board meeting will be on February 6th. We look forward to seeing you here. Um, we'll be moving into uh, the beginning phases of our budget season. So come prepared. Um, bring your coffee if you have to. May I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? I guess not. We are dismissed. We are adjourned. Have a wonderful evening, everybody, and we will see you on February 6th.